my first patient always like telling this, this story. So, um, I actually, I still work with her to this day. She's a marathon runner. And, uh, so she came in and she, she couldn't walk. So she was in excruciating pain during the evaluation. She made it clear that she had been prepping for a marathon, right? So the marathon was two weeks out and she wasn't walking. And so naturally in this evaluation, I told her, you know, you're not going to run this marathon, but I knew that I had the ARP unit. So I was like, all right, I think this is a good, good case to kind of put it to work. And, um, I kid you not, we did, I think it was six or seven sessions in those two weeks. And well, the first session that I had used it that day where she couldn't walk, she, she left without pain and her patterning was completely normal. So I was like, this is insane. She proceeded to do like seven sessions and she ended up running her marathon pain-free. That's just one story. Obviously, um, I have, I feel like hundreds of stories like that now, but obviously it's an incredible modality. Um, from my perspective, I mean, there's so many benefits, obviously pain always, that's my goal as physical therapist, but then also the range of motion benefits. Um, and then really just the patterning, right? So people that have pain, um, you know, with most injuries, they start moving you know, in weird ways and it kind of makes it worse and it starts to snowball. So when we're able to use this ARP, what I've noticed is that we get them moving correctly um, in a way that's pain-free as long as it's appropriate, right? So I'm always going to assess the injury and make sure that whatever movements we're doing is appropriate. But um, if it is, I'm going to use the ARP every single time um, and get them moving in a way that they should. And the clinical results are really through the roof. So I do work with a lot of, uh, upper extremity athletes. So obviously I'm seeing a lot of shoulder pain, elbow pain. Um, and I'm still, I mean, with the machine, I'm still, I'm not afraid to play around with it, quite frankly, with pad placements and stuff like that. I'm, you know, I've used the protocols and whatnot. Um, but what I've learned is, um, if you're in the region of pain, you're going to have a positive impact with this machine to some capacity. So, um, yeah, a lot of shoulders, a lot of elbows, but I see pretty much all types of orthopedic injuries. And I would say, I think I've used it at every single joint in the body. I, yeah, for sure. I've used it at every joint in the body. Um, and clinically the results have been through the roof. So one of the main things though, you know, obviously, you know, you hook people up to this machine and, and most people, it depends on personality types, you know, but I don't, I don't want to say most people, let's say half are, I don't want to say skeptical, but maybe a little bit eh, you know what I mean? Like, what's this machine? Is this like shock therapy or what? But as long as I do my job in getting the patient to kind of embrace the machine and I really communicate like, Hey, like there's, you know, nothing's bad. going to happen. You just gotta, you're going to get used to it. We're going to continue to bump you up and let's see how high we can take you. Um, I think that's the main thing, right? Because you gotta, you gotta get this thing as high as you can. I mean, that's, that's at least, that's how I'm approaching it. And that's how I've been getting my results. So um, if I can get that patient buy-in and get them to trust the machine and naturally it happens with more sessions, right? But obviously I want to be productive in my first couple of visits. So, um, if I can get the patient to embrace the machine, get them moving correctly, that's, that's a result. I'm going to, you know, that's where I'm going to get the best results. What is an overhead athlete? And, and then how, how have you used that expertise being with the brewers to sort of translate into where you're at with your practice and then using this machine? Yeah. Uh, that's a funny question. Like, it's a good question. Um, an overhead athlete, I guess, is, is anyone that's the sport, you're throwing something, right? So, I mean, water, polo, baseball, and sports like that, right? Football, if you're a quarterback, right? Like, even even them, they're like all the guys that, in, that play football. I, I work with a lot of football guys, too, but they're still throwing the football around, right? So, you'll see, like, shoulder injuries and stuff in football players that aren't quarterbacks. Sure. Um, but I guess that's, that's kind of like what I would consider an, an overhead athlete. My niche is definitely baseball, um, baseball, softball. Um, but yeah, so, and, and just from my experience with working with overhead athletes, a lot of them, it's, it's just like, it's just like, uh, doing a squat when you have back pain, right? You're going to start doing it funky and whatnot, but they start throwing weird, right? So I will actually work on, um, their patterning, right? So especially if they have a video of themselves throwing, cause I don't like to like change things up, especially if I don't know how they throw, but if they have, you know, content where I can see like, Hey, where were you throwing at your best? And I can use that. I want to get them throwing like that, right? Because they'll start throwing in weird ways. So that's another instance where I'll use this ARP and um, we'll get them on video and make sure that they're throwing correctly. Why is it in everywhere? Why, why is it, you know, not in every locker room or from high school to professional? I get that question a lot. You know, how, how come I haven't heard about this? And honestly, I'm like, I don't, I don't know, right? Like, um, I think it's, I think maybe people just aren't, 
um, really using it, right? Or like using it on themselves or like using it clinically enough, right? So um, to me, this thing kind of sell, you know, it's it, not kind of, it does sell itself, right? Like I don't need to like, people use it, especially if they're having pain. It's like, and they're like, they want to use it until the pain is gone, right? So um, it, it is crazy to me that this hasn't picked up. I know it's picking up steam, but that it's not everywhere, right? Like in every single pro, uh, pro sports locker room. Um, like I work with a lot of NFL guys here and they're like, you know, they're trying to take advantage of this thing every single day. I've had some buy it, um, or interested in buying it, but like, it's, it blows my mind that it's not everywhere, quite frankly. How does it, and why does it just like kind of the pain go away and, and they're able to function again? Are they firing them up and those are, are stayed fired up or, or how and why does that work in your opinion? Yeah, for sure. So again, like I know I keep going back to the moving correctly thing, right? So, you know, if we're able to get through, you know, a full rehab protocol, get rid of whatever condition it is, right? At that point, they're moving correctly, right? So we know that their brain is talking to their neurological system and and their muscles, right? And so I, the more I've treated clinically, the more I realize that our neurological system is like almost in control of everything, right? So in a sense, if I've gone through a full protocol and they don't have pain anymore, it's like, I don't want to say it's fixed, but they're moving correctly at that point. So um, they're using, they're recruiting their muscles, right? So um, like a big thing that happens with injuries is that is inhibition, right? That's like what we call it. So muscles stop working, right? And, yeah. and we know that this machine is able to get the muscles firing too, right? Like it's tapping into our neuro system, but it's also waking up the muscles, right? So now that the muscles are awake, it's like awake. It's, you know, we'll just use a knee injury, for example, right? Like we can use this machine to wake up the quads, right? And the brain's now talking to the quads and then we can get them more functional. And then next thing you know, they're doing, they're bad. They're doing deadlifts and stuff. Right. And it's like, it's just kind of a process. Like it's, that's how I look at it. You know, it's like, and I, I think the most important part are those first like three weeks. Like, can we get you moving correctly? And can we get your muscles firing? You know, I'd love to get your opinion and take on, you know, age and how that affects movement. For sure. So, um, we'd, we'd be lying if we said age, um, wasn't at play. Right. Yeah. So, um, I think one thing that I've learned clinically is as people get older, they, they lose strength obviously, but even more than that, it, it's the range of motion, right? So we'll just use a hip as an example. Like, let's say you haven't, you know, gone into a deep squat, like, okay, gardening is uncomfortable, but when was the last time you were really like did a deep squat comfortably? Right. And to me, that's less strength. It is strength, but it's the range of motion, right? So again, that's like range of motion is probably the most incredible thing that I've, that I've gotten out of this machine. Just that one concept, the range of motion. Um, so that's kind of where I, my head always starts clinically. Like, can we open up this hip? Like the strength will come, but if we don't have the range of motion, who cares? You know what I mean? Who cares? So let's see how much range of motion we can get for sure. Your ceiling is going to be a little bit lower as you get older. But what I've realized is that it's higher than most people realize you just, you're just not working on it because maybe you felt a little bit worse as you've gotten older. You know what I mean? So you just haven't, you know, put in the work, I guess. Um, so if we can get that range of motion back, then the strength will kind of come naturally, right? Like I like to do a ball on wall squat with like older, you know, older people like, all right, how low can you get? Cause the ball is going to let you get low. Right. Um, so you can put, you know, you know, put on this machine, get them moving, you know, get them low to the ground. And they're like, Oh my God, I haven't been this low in forever. You know what I mean? And so, um, will they be a little bit sore from that session? Yeah. But if you start doing it, you know, a couple of times a week consistently, next thing you know, you're in the garden and you're like doing your thing and you don't have pain. Right. So, yeah. Um, oh, what happened? Well, you just got the range of motion because we worked on it. You started getting low and this machine lets you do it comfortably, you know?